But Helga, I'm going to start giving you the floor because you have some awards to announce. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to get a little help here from uh, Julia and Laura uh, to uh, share some um, uh, cards. And I'm so pleased to share with the entire board that PMSEH has been recognized with two awards recently. One from the International Association of Adolescent Health, honoring Helen for her leadership on adolescent well-being and the work of PMSEH um, uh, in, in this regard. And this is uh, really great. And we're very, uh, we're very delighted, Helen. And congratulations, uh, definitely, to you. Well. Let, let, let me say the credit is all to PMNCH, which uh, uh, supplies me with the uh, the many opportunities and the, the many draft speeches and, and interventions. So uh, happy to receive it and highlight the, the work of PMNCH. Thank you, Helga. Oh, thank you for that. The other one, um, which we are also extremely delighted uh, to, and uh, we had actually uh, 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 we had tried in the middle of the night tonight uh, to put together a video, um, which I hope we will be able to send to you instead. But uh, uh, we are also sharing uh, this, and and that is that uh, we are being uh, the the winner of um, uh, India's uh, best design project for our branding. So the entire rebranding. Uh, has been recognized uh, with uh, a, an award. And so uh, this was uh, great. And branding from Lopez Design is best brand of the 2021 India Design Award. So it's very prestigious and very great. And we're delighted over this. And we're going to share <laughs> a little of that uh, video if we can put it together as uh, really some of our um, end of year uh, annual report um, colorful design. So. Thank you for the uh, Lopez and thank you for the comms team that has worked really well on this under Laurie's guidance. So that we just wanted to share that with you because that was really fun. Thank, thank you, Helga. And I must say, I think the design is great, uh, very lively, very vibrant. And uh, I, I just wish I could work out how to get it on my team's background. But <laughs> there we go. Um, Right, so uh, thank you to the uh, Secretariat team and also to Anne uh, and all who worked together to put together uh, some slides reflecting on what we discussed and agreed yesterday. And we're going to share those on screen now. They are in draft form, so uh, it could be important to get any reflections on them uh, before we develop the full note for the record of the meeting. Uh, so let's uh, share these uh, slides now, uh, uh, board decisions. Um, now, so we come to uh, the board uh, meeting. Uh, the agenda was approved. That was a big one. Uh, we didn't have any conflicts of interest that were noted. Uh, we agreed that we would record the board meeting and upload it on the website. We agreed that we would live stream our meetings in future, uh, subject to any closed sessions. Uh, and we uh, noted, I think, uh, the note for the record decisions guidance document from our 7 July uh, board meeting. So I don't think there's anything exceptional there. Uh, next to the executive committee report presented by uh, Darren, uh, we uh, noted and approved the Executive Committee's uh, 2021 progress report. Uh, we also, I think, noted the successful implementation of our governance reform and uh, the, um, well, the enthusiasm with which uh, members have engaged with that, board members. Uh, we noted the continuation of the, well, I guess approved the continuation of the overall work plan structure and organization as proposed, member led with three functional areas. Um, and then we discussed uh, the budget issues, the broad breakdown of budgets, 
the provisionally approved subject to decisions during the work plan development process, including appropriate allocation of budgets across the three functions, and people um, did make some points about that. Uh, so that was what we noted as uh, decisions coming out of the report presented by Darren. Um, so anything up to that point that anyone would want to uh, to raise a hand on? Uh, otherwise, we would proceed to write that up for the record. So I don't see any hands coming up on that. So then let's go to the substantive discussion we had on item three. And I'm going to uh, understand hand over to Anne to take us through uh, the collation which has been done on that as an agreement coming out of the meeting. Anne, would you like to come in now? Great. Yeah, thanks, Helen. Um, and happy to be with everybody once again at 3 a.m. for me. Uh, <laughs> so again, if I'm if I mumble a little bit, uh, be kind. Um, so our we have summarized and tweaked the slides that were presented yesterday, incorporating the really excellent uh, discussion that we had both uh, live and in the team's chat. And you'll see that reflected in, in this in the next, I think it's three slides. So first of all, just we noted captured here on this slide, some of the cross cutting comments, the recognition that all four of the proposed PMNCH advocacy goals are very much interconnected. Um, and that it's important to be clear uh, when we get to the work planning that our products and events and approaches uh, that each of them leverage from and uh, interconnect and contribute to each other, uh, such as the adolescent health and SRHR, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, it, you know, just it's a recognition of that. While we have the four goals um, itemized separately, there are very, very strong linkages across them and that will be reflected in uh, in how we plan for the work and in the messaging itself. The second cross-cutting point is on the crucial importance of the strengthening partner collaboration. Uh, what I think of as the, the amplify portion of, of what PMNCH does, which is you know picking up what our members do, what other global health partnerships do, the key messages. Um, we will flesh that out more in the 2020 uh, to work plan uh, and, you know, a, a looking for additional forms or opportunities of engagement we've, that we haven't yet identified, recognizing that 2022 is still going to be, um, and maybe the whole fu future for moving forward is going to be more of a hybrid world of online, virtual, plus, uh, plus in-person, although I hope we'll be able to shift at least somewhat more towards in-person in 2022. And then the third cross-cutting comment was, just a reminder that uh, that all of our objectives are anchored in this in this equity uh, equity goal. This sort of building forward uh, better, but also fairer, and you'll see that reflected in in the specific uh, one or two of the specific summary points as well. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, Again, we reiterate this is the review of the four goals, but with the tweaks that came that came through uh, from the discussion. So we did agree, as I sh summarized yesterday, that we'll continue to to anchor to the uh, COVID-19 call to action um, that asks one, uh, two, and three on the uh, protection access to RMNCH services the SRHR and gender, including uh, comprehensive sexuality education, the access to safe abortion, uh, prevention and treatment of sexually transmitted infections and HIV. And then the third ask on quality and respectful care, including midwifery delivered care are important. But what we heard from the group yesterday, as, as we noted, was that we also need to uh, focus specific attention on ask four on the health workforce protection and ask seven on the protection uh, prevention of gender-based violence uh, including for trans women uh, given the the surge that we have seen in uh, violence against women and girls uh, during during the COVID pandemic 
You also see noted here on the slide some additional suggestions on how that will feed into the work planning. For example, uh, a suggestion that, that uh, PM and CH could play a role in compiling and distilling evidence on the impact of COVID-19 crisis on women, children, and adolescents uh, to note, for example, that the drops in coverage of, of essential services, increases in maternal newborn mortality, the deterioration of mental health, the uptick of violence against women, et cetera, um, and that, that uh, being able to distill that evidence will strengthen our advocacy case. Um, also, the importance of engaging and uh, building alliances with parliamentarians in countries. We had some excellent uh, presentations and comments on that, particularly from Liberia yesterday. Uh, Martin emphasized this as well. So that collaboration, long-standing collaboration with IPU is a critical part of how we show up and engage in countries. So I think a, a strong endorsement uh, and, a, and a call for continuation, continuing and deepening that, that engagement with IPU and with parliamentarians. Our second recommendation was to increase our focus on uh, women, children, and adolescents within UHCPHC, improving equity uh, and access. Uh, for the resilience and recovery uh, from, from COVID. So that point that was in the earlier slide, building back fairer as well as better, uh, and that multi-sectoral approaches to improving PHC are vital, that the way uh, people access services and products is, is going to be different moving forward. And that's related to this additional suggestion on the how that engaging different stakeholders, including private sector, uh, to address, to overcome supply and service barriers, uh, particularly to, to, in reaching that last mile, will be will be a critical part of UHC PHC strategies uh, moving ahead. And that there needs to be specific attention to ensuring that women, children, and adolescents are uh, are being are being reached and have access to those essential products and services. Okay, next slide. Uh, we had strong endorsement for our increased focus on adolescent well-being, uh, a, a, a call for us to focus greater attention on the interconnections between SRHR and adolescent health and well-being, uh, a recognition of the importance of school-based education to adolescent health and well-being, um, which is specifically linked to the context of COVID-19 and school closures. Um, and, and then a suggestion that rather than adopting that broader language on planetary health, that we consider uh, focusing our language and our, and our uh, messages more specifically on the impact of the climate crisis um, on, uh, on SRHR for adolescents and youth, and then uh, a recognition of the importance of mental health in relation to adolescents' uh, well-being. There was just an article about this in, in, in the U.S. on, on uh, the really the massive scope of what we're seeing in terms of impact on uh, children and adolescents as a, as a result of COVID. And then our fourth recommendation was an increased focus on the ending preventable maternal and newborn deaths and, and stillbirths, that kind of longstanding component of, of PMNCH's work that we uh, reconsider, that we consider framing this more positively. What can we do to support optimal care for maternal newborn child health and well-being and to make sure that we link this goal back to our work on on the COVID-19 call to action. So again, you can see reflected in these notes this this um, that first point on the importance of the of, of recognizing and leaning in on the cross-cutting uh, aspects of uh, of our plan. So in this one, the increased attention to midwifery, the quality of, of midwifery care, um, including respectful care. So this is this is a, this is a summary. I think um, you know since this was presented, if 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 there are I think major corrections uh, or uh, any additional observations that people want to make, um, I'm actually sorry. I'm not sure how much time we have for this item, but I think we can take a few minutes. But hoping that overall we can have an endorsement of this and uh, and that this will then serve the basis for the next phase of our of our meeting and the. The, when we go to the breakouts and the and the work planning, get started on the work planning. So thank you, Helen. Thanks, Anne. And uh, I think Anne's summary has endeavoured to take on board the points that people made and where the consensus was sensed. But if there's um, any compelling point or anything you think that's been overlooked, now is the time to raise your hand to raise it. Otherwise, we would uh, proceed to prepare the, the note for the record based on 
uh, what Anne has put forward. So I see um, Annika, uh, please uh, come in. Thank you, and very quickly, thank you for that. And I think you've captured most of what we chatted and, and said, I think that's excellent. My only comment is on the last one. I think we should keep both in the framing of ending preventable maternal deaths and stillbirth, uh, newborn and stillbirth, uh, and then having and support uh, uh, quality maternal and newborn health. Because I think if we quit, leave the first piece out, it may look like we think that that has been achieved already. So I think it's important to keep it. Thank you. Thank you, Annika. And uh, Flavia, please come in. Thank you so much, uh, Anne. I agree. I don't know how you do it. This nice shift repeated <laughs> and you were very coherent. <laughs> My only comment was when we discussed the impact of the climate crisis, I'm not sure that we wanted to limit it to sexual reproductive health and rights and adolescents, because the elements that are emerging is actually the climate crisis impact the population we are concerned very much in all different fronts. Uh, for example, Jan from, from, from Figo made a comment about the, the impact of environment on pregnancies, on... So I think we might want to frame it more as the impact of climate crisis on the population the PMNC is, you know, advocating for. Over. Uh, thanks, uh, Flavia. Um, just checking here, no more hands up. So. Uh, and want to come back on those two points from Annika and Flavia? Uh, sure. I, I think they're both um, easily, I, I would agree that they reflect uh, some of the discussion. I think we can easily tweak that, tweak that language and come back to the, uh, to the board um, with uh, a few, uh, uh, any necessary changes to those slides. But I think they're, I think they were reflective of the discussion yesterday. So yeah, happy to. Um, looking at Helga for for concurrence right. on this one. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so so thank thank you everyone and, and thank you Anne for that. And uh, as a note for the record, we will be prepared along these lines, and of course everyone gets to check it again uh, at that point. So I think uh, that is uh, where we pretty much ended yesterday. Uh, so let's then uh, move on to uh, our. Business for day two, which is to uh, discuss and ideally approve the 2021 to 2025 results framework, which serves as the main organizing and monitoring mechanism for de delivering on the advocacy goals and determining the associated work plan structure, which guides implementation each year. Uh, to agree, agree on key approaches for pursuing these priorities through the three agreed PMNCH functions of knowledge synthesis, partner engagement, and campaigns and outreach. So, on the results framework, uh, let's now hand over to Mike Mazzo and Pete, to Pete Colenzo, who were respectively member and independent facilitator for the results framework working group. They will take us through the updated results framework and work plan structures for our consideration and approval. So Mike and Pete, come in. Thank you very much, uh, Helen. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues uh, from Dosaka, Zambia. It's really a pleasure uh, being able to join the board to benefit from the very rich uh, discussions from the board. And uh, here, uh, what I thought we'll do is, uh, with a colleague, Peter, uh, just share a little bit in terms of where we are on the results framework. Uh, this is a framework which reflects, or which, as much as possible, we're trying to reflect uh, the advice, the inputs uh, that came from board and other constituencies, so that uh, we can make a contribution when it comes to accountability and uh, also have an indication in terms of at what levels can that accountability be. Uh, not really to say uh, it would be monitoring and uh, evaluating per se, but each time 
just uh, an effort uh, within the secretariat with support from the board and other committees to make a self-introspection in terms of progress that's being made and in terms of the extent to which we can continue to be responsive uh, to the needs of those communities we are collectively committed to serving. So if I go to the next slide, I will just uh, introduce a few slides and then my colleague uh, Peter Colenzo would uh, take over. So yes, uh, at the 21st meeting, it was decided that uh, we need to approve the work to date on the results framework for 2021 and 2025 and ask uh, the recently established standing committees and working groups to take ownership of the results framework to develop it further, using it as a basis for activity planning. So on one hand, uh, we would actually have a tool, a reference tool, which would be uh, of use in that reference planning. And based on the recommendations of the Secretariat, uh, the Chair, uh, uh, Darren, uh, propose that an ad hoc committee, uh, ad hoc uh, and time limited framework uh, be developed within a working group. So really it's an ad hoc time limited results framework working group, which would further develop the results framework and propose a structure of the annual work plans for the strategic period under consideration, which is the 2021-2025 period. So if we go to the next slide, uh, it will reflect a little bit of uh, some of that in terms of uh, the working groups and the memberships, uh, looking at the governance structure, looking at the individuals and the constituencies they represent. So drawing from each of those governance uh, structures to ensure that there is indeed the representation of the various committees, uh, the diversity of uh, the working group memberships, the diversity of the mandate of the working groups themselves is such that one is able to capture uh, the key elements and encapsulate that uh, in terms of what we would want to see within that results framework. If that's a, a tool and that's a document which is going to be of reference. So I come to you representing the Knowledge and Evidence Working Group, uh, which my colleague Mark, uh, who made the presentation yesterday, uh, chairs. And there are other working groups, the Governance and Ethics Committee, Strategic Advocacy Committee, Partner Engagement, Accountability Working Group, Independent uh, Facilitator, as well as the m and uh, Expert Group. So that uh, really is a reflection of the diversity and expertise of the membership within that results framework uh, working group. And so if you go to the next uh, slide, you'll see that uh, you'll see that uh, uh, the, the, the working group itself and members have worked with expected outputs in terms of uh, trying to shape the content of the results framework liaising between the various committees, uh, meeting the whole group a few times uh, during the 20, September 21, 20 and December 21 periods, maintaining ongoing dialogue electronically and guiding the development of the document uh, with the uh, objective of being able to make a presentation uh, to the board to this uh, meeting. And uh, within those consultative uh, processes or meeting processes, uh, the progress has been made in terms of uh, uh, various versions of the results framework, looking at those, uh, revising uh, based on the inputs received, uh, looking into uh, further guidance that may be required uh, to tailor uh, both the structure, the indicators, as well as some of the means for verification of those indicators which the document uh, would be uh, monitoring or the document would be capturing. And so if we go to the next slide, you'll see that uh, uh, we are making a progress uh, in terms of uh, a document which can reflect the objectives when it comes to the results which are being looked at. 
a document that can guide and uh, be of reference, as I said, to both members and secretariat during the uh, implementation period, as well as a document that can inform external partners, including current and potential funders, about the work and added value of the partnership. Here, let me underscore uh, the issue of the work and value uh, added of the partnership. Also, to provide the basis for regularly monitoring the work of the partnership and eventually evaluating the work at the end of the strategic period, because this really is a reflection of for the period which uh, you have covered. And uh, you'll see that uh, you can look at the full document. Uh, there is a link which has been provided for the full document. And when you look at the full document, there are issues which will uh, which will be of consideration as we adopt and use the documents in terms of uh, how, what is it in terms of results which we are able to attribute and how do we measure those? Uh, in other words, uh, for attribution uh, to the partnership as well as the various working groups that support the partnership. In some instances, we are able to be able to find and say, yes, there is uh, this which reflects contribution. Uh, so contribution uh, is at times an easier measure because there are multiple partners. You know, I can reflect here, I give the example of saying, uh, when I was speaking with the Minister of Health uh, in terms of commitments and all that, and uh, looking at the results, uh, one of the issues which I said is that, which I did ask is that, how are you going to assess the and attribute uh, some of the contributions which are being made and coming from partners, uh, coming from uh, a, a body like the partnership, which is there for advocacy. And what he says is that, you know, we are cognizant of the contribution that's being made uh, because we do get uh, some of these uh, important contributions from multiple partners. Later on, if you delve into the documents, you may be able to see either the reference in terms of uh, the reference which denotes uh, some of those documents. And so part of our ongoing process for monitoring, evaluation processes and so on, is that we will have indicators uh, which may be high level indicators, low level indicators, some assigned to attribution, some to contribution as part of the monitoring and evaluation process. And finally, for my part, uh, it will inform the process on the annual work plan development, which will help in the operationalization of the very noble uh, contributions and ambitions of the partnership in the articulation of the work plan, which will be overseen by the various standing committees and working groups. So from here, I would let my colleague uh, proceed and go into the document itself. Thank you. Mike, Peter, thank you very much. You. Um, thank, and you. thank you also to all the members of the uh, working group who contributed to this. It was really uh, a great pleasure working with you. If we can maybe roll forward to slide eight in the interest of time, just to focus on the framework itself. There we go. So um, uh, just to describe very briefly how it works, and hopefully you've read these slides in advance, but at the bottom here, we have the outputs, the things that the partnership produces. And remember, this is things that are produced by partners and the partnership. It's not the secretariat, which is a really important emphasis of this results framework. So these are our products and activities clustered by the three functions, knowledge synthesis, partner engagement, campaigns and outreach. These push up to a set of short term outcomes, and we've described these in the results framework in terms of the strength and capability of our partners to advocate, bearing in mind that advocacy is, as per our strategy, the umbrella function of the partnership. And we're measure, proposing to measure this in terms of uh, the increases in knowledge, attitude, practice, and capability of the PMACH partners to do that job. In turn, this strength and capability pushes up a layer to the intermediate outcomes. Um, and this is about commitments made by principally governments, but also international development partners, regional global bodies and others. And these commitments in turn push up to the top level of high level outcomes and impact. And these are 
at high level outcomes, changes, actual changes following the commitments in policies, financing and services, and then a set of principally but not exclusively SDG related health outcomes and other development outcomes at the top of the framework. So that's the logic of the of the results framework. It's a logic that is fully consistent with the strategy and the theory of change in Annex 1 of the strategy and the indicators that we've started to populate this framework with. Um, our starting point has been the, the indicators in the, uh, the second annex to the strategy. We go on to the next slide, please. So um, as Helen said at the beginning and Mike reiterated, one of the functions of the results framework is to provide us the structure to flow into work planning and delivery. Very hard to look at this without rotating your head uh, 90 degrees to the left. I can only do 45, unfortunately. <laughs> but essentially, what we have listed on the left side is the intermediate outcomes and short term outcomes derived from the results framework that we just looked at. And then the important space that the operational plan, the work plan now here occupies is the outputs and deliverables. So what are the deliverables? The column in the middle there with the shaded um, text talking about sub deliverables yet to be populated. These are the products of the partnership. Again, it's the product of the partnership and the partners, not the secretariat, which is why to the right here uh, in the work plan structure, it talks about the partnership structure uh, and support from the secretariat rather leading with the secretariat. Um, so this, the, the annual work plan structure, which is yet to be populated, flows from the structure of the results framework. Next slide, please. This is the final slide. So next steps. So what, we're, what we've put before you today is a proposal for a results framework and the structure for the work plan. What is still to be done, um, conditional upon your, your comments and amendments to the results framework and the structure of the work plan, is to firstly populate that re results framework with specific target indicators and means of verification. Um, secondly, the baselines, which will form the basis for monitoring and eventually for evaluation. Um, and then finally here, the final bullet would be to work through the um, populating these work plans, which will be uh, led by the organizational structure of the partnership, the various committees and working groups to reflect what those what those committees and working groups in the broader partnership will deliver over time. So this is the next steps and the work still to be done. Um, final comment before I hand it back to Helen. Um, we think that this results framework is going to be helpful, um, one, in providing a set of credible causal pathways for how the partnership works, Two, to be able to look at it in a page and identify what the PMNCH is delivering and how. And three, critically, to provide the basis both for monitoring, attaching indicators to the different level of the framework, and also eventually for uh, accountability and for evaluation. We have struggled as a partnership in the past in when we've been evaluated to have a clear and measurable story, particularly discriminating between the attribution and contribution levels that Mike uh, spoke about when uh, when he was introducing the first part of this presentation, but we hope that this provides a structure to do so. Um, thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you to Mike and, and Peter for the presentation, and thanks also to all the members of the Results Framework Working Group and all the partners who've reviewed, commented, and generally engaged in what I believe has been a very extensive consultation process uh, to get us to uh, this uh, document. Uh, I understand there have been a, a number of iterations of it during the consultations and that uh, uh, the feedback is that many feel it's in a good uh, place. Of course, uh, a results framework needs to give us a, a clear reflection of what success uh, looks like and its targets need to be realistic and they need to be measurable. Uh, it also shapes our reporting process for the annual work plans moving forward, as well as feeding into the next independent evaluation PMNCH at the end of the current strategy uh, period. So uh, opening up for discussion, uh, we're asking people to consider the following. Do you agree with the overall results framework as presented? 
in the context of the framework, do you agree with the proposed theory of change, noting the ultimate attributable outcomes for PMNCH of seeking to secure policy, financing and service commitments nationally, regionally, globally? And finally, the results framework working group has set out some next steps and how the work can be taken forward. And any <coughs> reflections on that would also be of value. So I think I saw a hands up from uh, Lisa Hilmi. Come in, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, and thanks to everybody um, for the hard work on this. Um, Peter, it's great to see you again. Um, it led us through the strategy. Um, I, I think it's going in the right direction, but the two specific comments. Um, PMNCH sometimes uh, in the past has had a tendency to get too caught up in the process and um, forget about the results or um, it get becomes overcomplicated. So I caution, uh, since I'm leaving the board now, um, that uh, that process does not overtake the actual deliverables and the objectives. Um, and it should be clearly identified who is collecting the data, who is um, following up on this, because again, that can be a full-time job and we know um, that the secretary is a small but powerful team. Um, we would hate to see an extra burden fall on um, one of the secretariat members. And then the second point in regards the budgetary aspect of that. Um, you looking at the budget and the finances, certain things um, for the next couple of years seem a little bit underfunded, um, especially the adolescent um, forum uh, for 2023. And so, um, I w my suggestion is that not only when you're monitoring and building out this results framework, but really have a realistic um, target and detailed uh, breakdown for the budget. So thank you very much for this, the chance to speak. Uh, thank you, uh, Lisa. Uh, Caroline? Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I also, I just wanna, um, I feel what Lisa said, this is a really good start. Great, great work. Thanks to everyone who's contributed to it. I just had on behalf of the private sector constituency, a couple of comments for, for consideration. Um, the first is that at the very top at the PMNCH contribution level, um, I, we like that, you know, by the three um, areas of MNCH, um, SRHR and adolescence, you've got, you know, policy financing and services sort of indicators that you're going to be tracking. At the services level, we'd like to request that we make an explicit reference to private sector services as well. Oftentimes, um, when you see looking, you know, looking at service statistics, there's a, there is a tendency to just think about public sector. And we know that the private sector is a key deliverer of, of services. Um, for women, children, and adolescents. And so we'd like to make a request to make there an explicit reference to both public and privately delivered um, services in that, in that particular indicator. And then the second comment that we had as a constituency was just when we go down to the short-term outcomes, and I know that we're, you know, brevity is, is part of the challenge here when you're trying to get a whole results framework in, in one page and in one table. But there was a little bit of a reaction with regards to the, um, the short-term outcome with regards to um, increased capacity. Um, I think there are a number of partners that have existing um, capacity who want to engage. It's not just an issue of skills building, but really using that information to create more inclusive networks, more inclusive participation, more inclusive um, just um, collaboration. And so we wanted um, for consideration whether we could amend some of that language to really focus on the engagement of existing and new members. What we want to see is the full collaboration with the entire member network um, in these advocacy campaigns and, and the outreach um, activities that PMNCH is, is undertaking. So um, those are the comments from private sector. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Franca. Please come in. Thank you very much, uh, Helen, and thank you everyone for all this hard work. And in the basis to your two questions, I can agree with the framework generally and the theory of change. I do feel there's maybe going a step further instead of 
holding back. I feel there's like a theory practice gap whereby it is hard, for example, for within the constituency to know how how do you uh, who takes the lead? Who is proactive on what? What does it? Who does? What does it follow? Is it the working groups and the constituency that take the lead, or is it the constituencies themselves? How do we make sure that what we do is really aligned with this? What I find up to now is we're doing our best, but we're kind of just thinking of things we do, but it's not necessarily aligned. So the, the system and the process does need to kind of be easy in a way and invite. Uh, being able to follow it and at times I find it difficult to follow it uh, practically and that's where you know we have to use it so I, I would I'd like to look for some some guidance on how we could practically use it so that we are all aligned and moving in the same direction but otherwise um, great work thank you thank you uh, bringing in now Liberia please come in Good morning, good morning, uh, Chair, and thank you so much. Um, uh, I want to thank the team who did that presentation on the results of work. Uh, it is good that the framework captures uh, impact of partner, a PMNCA partner advocacy efforts and results at the country level, especially mobilizing the new commitment for women, children, and adolescents. As I look at the framework, although um, not directly reflected in the result framework, it is important to ensure uh, the implementation of these commitments and the country-specific results are also being linked to the result framework to facilitate monitoring uh, in the countries, in the partner countries. I see that um, intermediate outcome indicators that uh, the, the document uh, is of low and medium income country body. Uh, however, finite, like the financing. But uh, I also think that uh, the issue of financing for adolescents uh, uh, should be really prioritized. Uh, and I'm always talking about adolescents because looking at our, uh, our population that is youthful. Uh, so most of the time you will hear me say adolescent, adolescent. I'm also pleased that the government of Liberia is one of the partners uh, that has made commitment around this, uh, especially in the COVID. Uh, just before I leave, a, in addition uh, to low and middle income countries government, uh, to date five high income countries have also made commitments in the context of uh, the official development assistance and the support for women, children, adolescents health. Uh, especially in the context of Korea, I am curious to understand how that is reflected and captured in the result framework and how the implementation of this commitment will be reflected as well. Uh, so uh, I will stop here uh, as we all, as I keep listening to the presenter. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Uh, call the last two uh, contributors, uh, Vikas from India, followed by Anshu Banerjee of WHO. Vikas, please come in. Thank you, Helen. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. Uh, thank you, Mike and Peter, for an excellent presentation. It's good to see that a consultative, uh, extensively consultative process has been followed to develop the results framework. Uh, it is indeed a wise approach for PMNCH to clearly make the distinction between attribution and contribution. Uh, I also support the comment made by Lisa uh, regarding uh, pragmatic budgeting. Uh, and perhaps we would need to be allocatively more efficient in allocation of resources across various priorities uh, and make sure that uh, uh, we do allocate sufficient resources uh, proportionately to uh, in accordance with the results that we are targeting through the results framework. Uh, we would perhaps also need to step up our efforts for mobilizing more, res more resources uh, because uh, as I can see the results framework is ambitious. It does capture the theory of change that we have and and uh, perhaps this is uh, this is going to 
uh, guide the partnership going forward, both in terms of setting the ambition, setting the bar high, and also you know setting uh, targets and internal goals for ourselves uh, for further mobilization of resources in order to be able to undertake advocacy efforts and interventions uh, which would feed into achievement of those results that we are uh, uh, targeting. Uh, I think uh, I would also like to emphasize the importance of both uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, to ensure accountability and learning. Uh, uh, that will be key to driving PMNCH's impact uh, as pointed out by Mike in his presentation. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Ellen, back to you. Thanks very much, Avikas. Uh, Anshu is the last speaker, and we're also, of course, noting the comments in the comments box. Anshu? Thank you, Helen. Um, I just wanted to make one comment because this follows, I think, nicely on, on the presentation that Anne gave and, and what we agreed on earlier. But um, I just wanted to highlight that I think it, it's more about quality and that numbers of products, etc., are maybe less relevant, but it's really about what is it that we want to achieve and what do we need to do to achieve that. So um, if I look at, for example, the outputs and it's about numbers, um, then um, it's not just numbers, I think. And so it would be nice to see how, um, when this is completed, how this is going to work out. I think as a framework, it's good, but uh, I'd like to see what the actual plan is going to be for 2022. Uh, thanks, Anshu. Uh, Angela, you wanted to come in? I think not. OK, um, uh, Mike, Peter, any want to come back on any of the points made? I don't know if Peter has, but uh, for me, I think uh, we have noted uh, very much. We appreciate very much the uh, uh, comments, the suggestions, the issues of uh, complementing uh, quantity with quality. Indeed, uh, we'll have to integrate measures of quality, and uh, we know that it's a bit difficult to 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 quantify quality but one can allude to the quality uh, of the products and there are ways we could incorporate to ensure that we do capture uh, that. And um, uh, some of the comments and suggestions, I think uh, uh, in terms of ensuring that there are adequate resources, uh, in terms of uh, uh, being able to measure uh, impact through M&D, uh, all those I think are issues which we can take on board and. Uh, uh, ensure that we have integrated. Thank you very much. That's it on my part. Maybe Peter. Just to add, I think very helpful comments, as Mike said. I think we can accommodate them all. There's a tendency in writing a one page compressed framework where you, you lose a bit of subtlety and we may be indicating things that we're not indicating, like commitments are only for low and middle income countries and not for high income countries. So those types of issues, how we're describing services, how we describe uh, capacity is a fairly limiting concept, uh, quantity, quality. I think we can address all of those, certainly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, taking on board uh, the comments, I, I think we're in a position to approve the results framework of work plan structure, uh, noting that it's been extensively uh, consulted uh, upon. I understand that our committees and working groups are planning to hold a retreat in early February, during which they'll take the guidance of the board into account as they develop their plan for 2022, which will go to the executive committee later in February or early March. And that process will also support the further development of relevant indicators, means of verification and milestones for the results framework. Uh, so I think we will proceed uh, on on this basis that it's approved. And of course, it's an iterative process that uh, will keep uh, keep going through uh, committees, groups, uh, and executive committee. So uh, let's come along to item uh, seven, where we dig a little deeper uh, into the priorities that we agreed on day one. 
uh, to be approached through our three main functions of knowledge synthesis, partner engagement, and campaigns and outreach. Um, I'm going to ask Darren, as Executive Committee Chair, to introduce this item, and Helga to provide us with the instructions we need for getting ourselves organised into the breakout groups. And she may also want to give some reflections from the side of the Secretariat. All board members have been allocated to one of the three groups, and we will be whisked away to them at the appropriate uh, time. So the aim is to discuss how the three main functions of PMNCH will be carried out by members to mobilise national, regional, global commitments for women, children, adolescent health. And each function area will be illustrated in relation to a flagship deliverable for 2022. Darren, please come in. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. I, I didn't come in on that last session because I, I get to hold the floor now. Um, but there's a, a, a really nice connection. I think this is a session where a lot of things begin to come together. And I, it struck me we're in a very, very different place as a partnership from where we were a year or more ago. Um, you know, with the, the fantastic work that's been done on the strategy, we've now got this results framework. We've got good, good ideas about what we're going to put into our work plan. I think we've got our governance sorted. It really is all very positive. Um, and you know, that results framework looks to me to be a really tight system linking activities to outcomes, to outputs, to the um, to our budgets. And it will have to evolve. These things always do. When we te road test it and we see how, how it works for us, I've no doubt that we'll end up um, tweaking it and uh, evolving it along the way. And that's a positive thing as well as we grow and learn. Um, so we've got that results uh, framework now. Uh, we had a fantastic discussion on our priorities. Uh, and thanks to uh, Anne and to all the consultation, all, all those who contributed to the consultations that went um, into that. We are, you know, this will now go to the executive committee and we'll take um, those priorities through the structures to develop the work plan that will give us those results uh, that we want to, to see. And here you've got a slide which sets out in some of the, the timings. Um, so I'm going to chair a short meeting next week just to make sure we've really um, you know, heard the messages from the board. We're all in one place on that as we get towards the end of the year and that we've agreed this sort of time frame moving forward. So our personal aim is that we might be able to condense it a little bit because whilst we're getting on with the work now, we're not pausing. Um, still, it's good to have things uh, you know, sewn up as quickly and as early as we can at the beginning of the of the new year. So you see here that throughout January, there'll be um, you know, development of the draft work plan, the indicators and the milestones. There's, um, our SAC and PEC colleagues are going to lead a lot of that, but also um, you know, plan a, a retreat where they'll pull things together. Um, there will be consultation because, as we've been emphasising yesterday and today, the full engagement, involvement and ownership of the membership is critical to our success. And then the executive committee will provide some oversight, monitoring, challenge, uh, coordination uh, and, and basically lean in to help uh, where we can. So we have an agreed work plan, ideally towards the end of February, maybe slipping into early March uh, if needs be. So that's the time frame. So we'll take views on that uh, again early next week in the executive committee. But what I think we're hoping to do now is um, focus on a number of the proposed flagship projects which are going to feature uh, in that work plan uh, development. We will we, we'll recognise them. They've uh, resulted from fantastic work um, that's gone on uh, to develop the concept notes uh, and the proposals that we that were shared ahead of this meeting. Um, huge potential, uh, I think, through those those flagship initiatives. But Helga, I think you're going to tell us how you want now to discuss how we develop those further and begin the task of populating uh, some of that work plan. Thank you so much. And uh, recognizing Darren's explanation that we are now moving from uh, results framework to uh, the development of the 2022 work plan. Um, uh, the work plan development process will be taken forward by PMNCH's standing committees and working groups. And work on this will begin immediately in the new year. 
So the SAC and the PEC already have a two day retreat uh, booked soon after the holidays to delve deep into the details of the work plan following the structure that Mike and Peter uh, presented earlier. Uh, to he help with that work plan development process, the board is now being offered an opportunity to provide its guidance on the main mechanisms to be included in the work plan and around which the work plan will be developed. So the four flagship deliverables that are being uh, proposed and by a flagship deliverable, we mean those uh, uh, deliverables that reflect the added value of PM in describing our how. Uh, these have been included here because we need your strategic direction. We think uh, these require the greatest level of effort and uh, potential reward in 2022. They have bubbled up, uh, um, uh, up over the last uh, year from many discussions among uh, partners. Uh, as examples of major deliverables that PMNCH could uh, potentially include in its 2022 uh, and, and, and beyond uh, work plan uh, and which could be applied as mechanisms to any of the strategic advocacy priorities. So these um, deliverables include the Global Investment Framework, the Partners Forum, uh, our Digital Advocacy Hub, which you will recall from the governance reform is that the heart of how we're going to work more and better together and the global leaders uh, network um, and and board members as shown on the slide uh, will we will have an opportunity to discuss this in more detail so i hope that you will have uh, had an opportunity uh, to have read the concept note or discussion note for each uh, that were uh, shared uh, with each of the break, break, uh, breakout session participants ahead of time. So as you reflect on these deliverables, it will be um, an opportunity to consider how these de uh, deliverables will help us deliver on the strategic advocacy priorities that we have agreed upon uh, yesterday and confirmed this morning. So consider also what supporting uh, deliverables may be needed as well, all this will then be in inform the development of the work plan in the new year. You will be placed automatically in your groups uh, and uh, will be brought back to plenary automatically as well. Uh, you will be um, zipped in and zipped out or uh, um, uh, as, a, uh, as one does in track um, in Star Trek. Um, one, uh, once in the breakout groups, um, there is a designated chair for each group uh, will guide the discussions. Uh, discussions will be supported by an ex uh, expert present who will introduce the topic. Uh, and these uh, experts are actually from uh, working groups and, uh, and uh, some of the standing committees, after which the group will have an opportunity to then discuss. So the designate, there is also a designated rapporteur uh, which will then uh, uh, bring back uh, to the plenary or the uh, group will decide who then will actually present back to the plenary. So each session has also a focal points from the secretariat who will help in regards to projecting the presentation as well as the help helping the rapporteur in any way uh, needed. Uh, we uh, encourage each group to use the last 10 minutes to work on their recommendations, which will be shared and discussed further during our plenary following the breakout session and uh, and a short break. So, dear board members, uh, wishing you very constructive and fruitful discussions and looking forward to hearing your reflections and discussing them in the plenary. Uh, thank you and over from me, uh, Helen. Thank you, Helga. And I think uh, we are running a, a little bit late, but I think we could run the groups through till uh, uh, 40 minutes past the hour, uh, then take the five minute break and we'll start again at 45 minutes past the hour with the, the feedback and, and, and plenary on this. Uh, Helga did just ask me to uh, briefly run past you uh, as a group uh, the note that is going to be discussed around the Global Leaders Network because this hasn't been to the board as a whole uh, in the past. Um, we have seen at PMNCH growing interest from political and global leaders 
in engaging in and committing to deliver in the women, children, adolescent health uh, area. And uh, given the uh, demise of the every woman, every child high level steering group, that there is an opportunity now for PMNCH to ensure uh, that there is a high level group in the form of the Global Leaders Network going forward. Uh, the feedback we got from uh, board leadership after the July board meeting was on the need to engage global leaders, not through the board itself, uh, not through these meetings, but through a more flexible mechanism. And so uh, quite a lot of, of work has been done around this concept note on the Global uh, Leaders Network. It's been a result of ongoing dialogue uh, under the leadership of Joy Pumapi as co-chair of the Partner Engagement Country Committee and with Lars as a member of the Strategic Advocacy Committee as well as with other uh, senior board office holders. So it's quite a bold proposal and we look forward to feedback in the uh, breakout and then in the uh, plenary as well. So, so let's give it till around uh, uh, 40 minutes past the hour for the groups. Take your five minute comfort break and we'll be back at 45 minutes past. In essence, it was really to look and say, um, what is it we need to do uh, in order to renew uh, that commitment, uh, that investment that can make a difference when it comes to uh, women, children and adolescents health and well-being. And so the discussion revolved especially around what has been done, to what extent can we map that which has been done before and the outcomes that relate to that which has been done before so that we can build upon that which has been done. We can pitch it to reflect a fairly holistic approach uh, with clear engagement of stakeholders. So adding value to the initiative in terms of for doing uh, meta level existing investment case amplification, uh, facilitating access to evidence if we are talking of for evidence investment for advocacy, uh, highlighting some of the gaps and needs on a return on the returns in terms of that investment for further in depth analysis. And also to try and build on these existing uh, partner efforts. So we know that there are a number of partners who are involved in a number of uh, or areas of investment. For instance, we heard from UNFPA in terms of the adolescent investment case. Um, that, you know, try to incorporate uh, some of that which is taking place in that effort to ensure that the product and the commitment we have reflects that holistic multi-sectorial approach of uh, towards integration uh, within that continuum of essential services for women, children, and adolescents. And also looking at it within the SDG framework uh, to ensure that uh, indeed we can be responsive to the issues of sustainability, issues of uh, resilience, equity, uh, and ensuring that we do have fairer societies. Uh, the multi-sectorial approach in terms of equity, social justice, those were highlighted and emphasized Emphasis was also placed on the value of investing in global health security for resistance, preparedness, and recovery, uh, given some of the emerging issues that are coming. Uh, to what extent can we be ahead of the curve in a way in terms of saying, yes, here is the investment so that we are not behind, but we are ahead. We are not following, but we can indeed be able to respond accordingly. So what should success look like? Uh, if we are able to ensure that partners are equipped with robust evidence for advocacy, action and greater accountability. And this is something which uh, we know that the partnership, including some of the uh, global working groups, uh, have been able to rally around, you know, the extent to which uh, the various stakeholders can be mobilized uh, towards uh, that uh, goal. Uh, development of an investment case which is holistic, which I've mentioned, integration, integrated approach and building on existing efforts. That will really reflect the success. You know, once we have taken some of those into account, 
and then we are able to say yes we have a successful uh, outcome also the issue of learning from these existing cases to frame the gif in ways that will resonate with policymakers and other key stakeholders because you know each time you approach uh, policymakers you don't want them to say what is new now uh, what is it that is going to make a difference but to be ready to answer and to say based on those commitments we had based on the success we saw now, uh, this is now what we are proposing in order to propel it and to hold the momentum and move forward. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And I thank, thank you very, very much, the members of the group. Thank, thank you very much. Now, Hilda, are others ready or do we take discussion on this? Maybe we should take the discussion on this. Yeah, I'm just, I think there, I'm just is also, there is also one second slide, Mike. I don't know if you want to touch upon it or just we can read it quickly. Is that the one we see now? Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, in terms of some of the challenges, the rethink the name of the global investment framework to reflect the country ownership, you know, uh, that's something which was echoed and reflected so that it's not just a global, because some people may perceive that as being up there and not integrated within country framework. So to instill country ownership, uh, to see if we can couch it in such a way that it does reflect that aspect, embrace complexity and consider phasing and flexibility in developing and launching the products, uh, given the ambition, which is uh, fairly ambitious, and moving from return on investments to evidence on policy and action. And so within that, uh, uh, within that framework where we look into some of the challenges, uh, what then would be some of the uh, next steps, partners sharing existing and under development investment frameworks for review, secretariat to be in touch with partners who expressed an interest in engaging, and certainly some did elect even during the discussions that potential for engagement and the partnership the secretariat to convene a strategic committee in the first quarter of 22 to oversee the development of the GIF following the SAC and PEC retreat and EC meetings which I think have been alluded to much earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Now I think rather than take each discussion separately. We should hear from all the groups and then people can consolidate their feedback because we we don't, we, we're sort of running into the last half hour now. So group two is ready. Please come in, rapporteur for group two. Yeah, thank you very much, Helen. Uh, Julia, can you make the slides? Uh, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so, so our, our group discussion was focused on the Global Forum for Adolescents and also the Digital Advocacy Hubs. Uh, the first question was, how does success look like for the Global Forum of, of, for Adolescents? And we discussed a lot uh, the, the, the issue of accessibility and we think that a forum that is accessible for everyone, including people with disabilities, and also including adolescents themselves, will be something that we consider successful uh, for the forum in 2023. Now, uh, we're also looking to including a variety of topics. So we're talking, we're looking into including well-being, SRHR, mental health, climate change as well, uh, as we consider these key topics for adolescent health and well-being. Uh, in terms of major outcomes of the of the forum, uh, we hope also that whatever happens during the forum is also linked uh, with the, what happens during the SDG summit and the UN high level uh, high level dialogues. Uh, because we think that sometimes there is some disconnection between what happens with civil society and, and like outside of these main events on the sidelines and what actually is, do is documented on negotiations or agreed language for, for high level resolutions. And we do think that there should be a link here and that is considered success for, for our group. Uh, besides that, um, something that m might sound um, not not too important, but I think that including adolescents themselves uh, will be key during the for, for the global forum. Um, we know that there are some some so, some some issues and, and some uh, barriers, for example, you know, like parental consent and, and, and those kind of things. 
However, do, we do think that including people who are in the age group of 10 to 19 who are adolescents themselves will be important uh, for the forum, not only as participants, but also like leading the planning and also involving them in the sessions uh, will be important for to ensure that we're addressing their, their needs. Success uh, also looks like for us, um, I think that I cover most of the topics now, yeah. For, for the how uh, the digital hubs can effectively uh, be used for partner consultations and planning for 2022, uh, we discussed using a variety of formats linked to ensuring uh, access, and we know that accessibility is something that was mentioned several times during the discussion. Uh, also needing to ensure that we are linking uh, the global and national hubs um, to have a true discourse here uh, on, on the priorities as well as also uh, the, the work that other organizations are doing should be linked as well. Uh, security and, and privacy concerns were also raised, considering that, for example, uh, some more controversial issues can be discussed in, during this, in these hubs, for example, SRHR-related issues in conservative um, in countries with restrictive laws, for example, is a, is a, is a, is a concern. Uh, and we also discussed that um, everyone is doing different things, you know, every organization wants to launch their own platform and have something big for themselves. However, we do think that there should be some kind of convening uh, to make sure that, we, I mean, because we know that these things uh, have, have costs associated and we, we know that it, sometimes this cost is high. So we should all be getting together and making sure that we are convening and having some kind of um, big platform that is launched between everyone and PMNCH as a convener could have this role. And finally, uh, what opportunities do we see for building uh, on 2022-2023 roadmaps uh, and other global events that might be taking place in 2023? We identified, uh, for example, the, the ICFP conference on family planning in 2022, uh, Women Deliver and the, I, and the conference of ICM will be taking place in 2023 as well. And there will be some follow-ups from ICPD in 2020, 2024. Sorry. Uh, so it will be important uh, as something that was mentioned during the, the discussion. It will, will be amplified if we also amplify other people's or other, other organizations' work. So it will be important just to align with with the work that everyone is doing. I think that those are the the key points. And yeah, thank you very much, Helen. Thank you, David, for that comprehensive report. Now, is uh, Group 3 ready on the Global Leaders Network? Is the last ready? Yes. We have a slide. Do we have Lars? Sorry, I was on mute, I think. Uh, so I'll give you a short reminder about the context here and then we will come with our our uh, input on the questions we discussed so the the global leaders network is envisioned to be a loosely knit peer-to-peer -peer network of heads and states and governments uh, that operates in a coordinated manner to increase investments strengthen policy directives and enhance service delivery for women's children's adolescents health and well-being and so it's un anchored at highest level uh, members are at highest level. Uh, the network will be convened and chaired by uh, a world leader with uh, issue credibility and convening power. Uh, this also includes at regional and global level. And the global network of leaders will consist of up to 10 leaders, uh, heads of state government from global north and south, each committed to a multi-sectoral approach to sustainable de development. And PM and Serge Board Chair Helen Clark will coordinate and facilitate the network supported by the PM and Serge Secretariat. So next slide, please. So we discussed two, two questions. The first one was how can Global Leaders Network have catalytic effect and build momentum for effective global, regional and national action for women's children, adolescents, and health? Uh, so the input was that it should be an informal network of sitting heads of states and global uh, heads of states and, and uh, government. Um, the network will work with champions and advocates, which include board members and other PMNCA champions, such as ministers of health, heads of regional economic blocks and commissions of social affairs, entrepreneurs, faith-based leaders, 
who will support the leaders network by acting as megaphones and advocacy amplifiers uh, of the work being done by the global leaders network. Uh, the members need to be able and willing to access, influence and mobilize peers uh, or other global champions, including from UN agencies, funds and foundations, uh, regional and parliamentary organizations, private sector and CSOs. Uh, the members should be instrumental in influencing the agenda of global and regional platform. Uh, including strategic dialogues with such as G7, G20, AU, etc., and, and bringing women, children, and other lessons to the forefront of political discussions. And of course, the members need to be interested in achieving more together uh, in an orchestrated fashion of women, children, and adolescents' health and the related SDGs rather than acting alone. Uh, networking members will be able to mobilize additional commitments in the context of the COVID-19 response and recovery plans, including investments in, uh, in healthcare workers, minimizing disruption to SRM and CAH services. And it's important to map the existing networks. There are already in the, in the UNFPA High Level Commission, the Sun Scaling Up Nutrition Now lead group, and align and see the value add, add of being together, moving together. So um, we had also had some recommendations from uh, for, from on leaders to be approached, and that would be uh, re uh, heads of state and governments who are already champions for uh, women's uh, and sharing the vision of women's children's adolescent health. We have a significant group of commitment makers already at highest level influential leaders who are yet to be champions and support them to become potential champions uh, in the geopolitical sphere. Thank you very much and uh, for a very good and rich discussion. Helen and Helga, you might have something to add because you were both active in the group. Helen, you were sharing. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's a good summary, uh, Lars, and I, I won't use the chair's prerogative to add in at this point, so we we are now uh, open uh, for hands up in the in in plenary uh, for any further comments anyone would uh, would like to make. Uh, of course, not everyone was in every group, um, so you may have observations from other report backs as as well. But the the floor is uh, open for anyone who'd like to uh, comment on any of the. Uh, report backs. I'm not seeing hands at the moment. Which Anne, yes, come in. Um, thanks, Helen. Uh, I I actually posted my uh, question, which was uh, around the global investment case in the chat. But um, Mike or the the colleagues may not have seen it, so since it hasn't been replied to, I will uh, give it voice. Which is, um, I, I just wondered if there was clarity on what the actual product or products will look like. I, I really appreciate the approach that the group has, has outlined of, you know, starting with a compilation of what already exists, of uh, doing an assessment of what advocates and, um, uh, and you know, keep the key stakeholders in this space want and what it would look like. But I wondered if there was any suggestion of what will, will this be Will will there be a new product that that pulls on uh, existing investment cases and tries to pull it together, or will the product be this compilation of of existing resources? I don't know if the group reached a consensus on that, or if that um, remains uh, TBD. Uh, would uh, uh, Mike like to respond to that? Thank you. Uh... So the product would really be something that builds upon the various initiatives that have been in place or that are in place. Uh, it's more or less a recognition of uh, an evolution that it's evolving. Yes, we may have had uh, investments here and there and uh, what have been the outcomes associated with each of those and uh, what is it that still needs to be done. In other words, uh, the job is not yet done because we still have some of those adverse outcomes we are working towards impacting on when it comes to women, uh, children and adolescents. And some of these have are now been compounded uh, by some of the emerging threats. 
So those that were vulnerable or those that have traditionally been vulnerable, uh, they have even, it has become even more urgent to invest in trying to be protective proactively, uh, being ahead of the curve in terms of that shield. And so if we do have an investment which says uh, what succeeded, what failed, and how can we draw upon that uh, to try to bring this to bear and to try to have commitments uh, whose investments can reflect uh, some of these evolving needs. And maybe our chair, uh, Flavia, can also add, I try to just capture uh, from the, some of the diverse discussions, but uh, uh, Flavia was steering the discussion. So please, uh, Flavia, Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mike. And uh, maybe just the best uh, answer is, uh, Anne, uh, I don't think there is a clear definition of whether it's only one product or more than one product. I think the idea is that we need to innovate. Uh, there were suggestions from the group also on the names, as Mike has uh, presented. We, there were great suggestions and great interest by many to participate in shaping these uh, with probably what will be one uh, summary product, but also many different aspects uh, that could uh, be uh, presented e even in an innovative manner, in a digital way. So I don't think we have an answer yet to your uh, key questions, Anne, because this is, uh, uh, the, the good thing is that the group is already at work at assembling and analyzing what exists and the field is rich. So we first need to have that assembling and analysis done and then come with a, with a more refined proposal. Mm. Thank you, Flavia. Uh, Annika, followed by Anshu. Yes, to say also, I was also part of that group and I, I think there really needs to be more discussions on what we're aiming for. But I think it was a very good start and I think it might be even good to have a question, you know, to the whole of, of PMNCH when we come a bit further to say what would be the most useful product to have. And mm -hmm. I think what we agreed on was that it's really difficult to have an overarching holistic investment case and return on investments for the whole area. So, but that was also reported by Michael, but I just wanted to add that. My co other comment was on just a question on, on uh, the high level uh, group that uh, there are, of course, many different networks now of high level, the, the Nairobi 25 high level commission that's looking at very similar issues and, and really pulling together on the broader SRHR and, and all the issues that also are PMNC AIDS mandate. So I'm just wondering uh, how, how that will add value to already existing groups that, you know, look towards uh, materializing the commitments that have been made overall. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Annika. Uh, Anshu? Thank you very much, Helen. Um, I was just wondering, um, we did an investment case, I think, five years ago with the GFF when they uh, did their business case, let's say. So I'm just wondering how large or how big this work is and how we can make sure that we build on mm -hmm. things and maybe just update some of these previous investment cases um, so that it isn't too much work uh, and how can we as agencies be engaged because there are a lot of new developments um, uh, that could be costed and included but my overall suggestion would be is to maybe update something rather than scope a how scope out a whole new piece of work that um, could never could be never ending as and i think was sort of, sort of trying to hint at uh, this could be, you know, piece of work for three years, and um, so I think, you know, if we can get something done quick, quickly within the next few months by updating previous investment cases that sort of cover this plan by um, uh, with support of different agencies, I think that would be useful. Thank you. Thanks, Enshu. Very practical approach, I think. Uh, Rajesh, India. Yeah, thank you, uh, Helen, and sorry, uh, this is Vikas again. Uh, uh, Mr. Rajesh Bhushan is, uh, is is called by the minister and is with the minister currently on some urgent assignment. But I'll pitch in uh, in terms of uh, the, the responses to the presentations just made. 
uh, I'll be commenting about uh, the global investment framework and also some suggestions about the global forum for adolescents. Uh, in terms of the investment framework, we welcome uh, the the uh, the efforts to develop the uh, global investment uh, uh, framework for WCAH. As has been pointed out, it perhaps needs a bit more discussion, but I uh, we would rather agree with uh, what Anshu just pointed out that rather than trying to work out something new, perhaps we should build on our experience and. Uh, uh, incorporate and you know target to develop a framework which is uh, aligned and consistent with our uh, priorities. Uh, uh, developing something new may pose the risk of uh, you know loss of focus or, or something like that. Um, we also are very supportive for developing a investment framework for adolescent well-being uh, because that's that's some, that's a new dimension that uh, we all want to pursue. Uh, from a partner government's perspective, we believe that these uh, investment frameworks uh, will help the Ministry of Health officials in uh, national governments to advocate for more resources with the Ministry of Finance uh, colleagues in the respective uh, governments and uh, uh, garner more resources not only for health sector, but especially for the women, adolescents and uh, children. Uh, now, as far as the Global Forum for Adolescents is concerned, uh, uh, just like to uh, point out that uh, in the presentation, uh, perhaps some bit of uh, information could be added uh, in terms of the uh, you know budgets and support for the partner uh, global uh, uh, adults in forum. Uh, as Lisa pointed out uh, in the earlier discussions, uh, we would need to uh, adequately finance uh, various activities and therefore. Perhaps uh, you know some mention of enhanced uh, budget support for the partners forum or the glo uh, global uh, adolescent forum uh, would be a good idea. <coughs> Maybe you know uh, somewhere comparable to the head of uh, Women Deliver. Yeah. Thank you. That's deep. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Vikas. Um, uh, Liberia, come in, please. so much thank you uh so i think this was a very good meeting uh i was uh, i was actually commenting on the, the other lesson uh um in the part of all that we've been discussing although everything else was because of time but just to let everyone know that the government has been for the other lesson part in the show as you know we from the last part of our application journey uh, and uh, especially to make sure that they have knowledge, have skills, that they are informed to make informed decisions, uh, and that they are involved in having uh, programs around their own health uh, issues. Uh, so we, we are so committed to making sure that all of the acts that we committed to the portfolio uh, actions, we will do all uh, in our power to make sure that these are and as we said earlier, on our side in Nigeria, the minister and her team will be uh, helping the global PMAC to make sure that we are uh, lobbying with the president to be a part of the, uh, the GLM. Um, I know that uh, we just want us to know that the thematic uh, proposal for the global forum on other level is very, very calm. And this will be. Uh, an excellent opportunity uh, to both uh, de de demonstrate as well as learn and also make new and full commitments uh, to advance the well being of the participation group. And the bigger group, like I said, for last year is the analyzing group. And also, just to add a piece, we uh, still say and still believe that the, the GLA is a very good platform. That were uh, interested to what PMC is already doing with the country. Thank you so much, and I uh, 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 look forward to more engagement. Thank you. And Lou Wei, yes. you have the last call. Thank you. Lou Wei speaking on behalf of UNICEF. We, I was in the 
Global Leadership Network subgroup. It will be a great forum to lend the political leadership and the voice and the network. And from UNICEF, we would like to suggest that the, the agenda is linked to some concrete measurable outcomes. Either it is UHC, P primary health care, or SDG acceleration. And it will be great if we can complement the voice of the leadership with voice of women and uh, and the families. I'm thinking about thinking of examples of whether maternal death, stillbirth, or newborn death could be could be some there could be stories generated from communities to host to hold the government accountable together with the global leaders. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Lu Wei. Right. Well, uh, these have really been very, very, very substantive uh, items. And I shall await a little advice from uh, Helga about how we handle uh, moving forward on them. Uh, I understand uh, Vikas uh, that India was um, uh, to make a, a, a statement as vice chair. Are you, are you at, if, as we end, wind up our meeting, are you prepared for that at, at this point? Yeah, yes, Helen, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. I'd uh, like to sincerely apologize on behalf of Mr. Rajesh Bhushan, uh, for not being able to uh, make it despite uh, his best intentions, uh, given the current circumstances. So he had two parliamentary uh, appearances today and uh, is currently engaged in discussions with uh, colleagues from the biotechnology department and the Indian Council of Medical Research and with the health minister uh, on the ongoing uh, pandemic uh, situation in the country. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, he has asked me to convey uh, his uh, sense of loss for not being able to uh, make it uh, and has assured that uh, going forward, uh, uh, he would try and find uh, you know, time for uh, meaningfully engaging in the, in the future, uh, <coughs> uh, future board meetings. Uh, uh, has also asked me to congratulate Helen for uh, the recognition that you've just uh, received and also thank you for uh, for your very dexterous uh, uh, carrying out of the whole uh, proceedings. Uh, just for the information of colleagues, uh, uh, since there are, there are colleagues here from uh, uh, Gavi recipient countries, uh, just an update. So we have... Uh, uh, you know, successfully administered something like one point, more than 1.25 billion vaccine doses so far in India, and uh, have uh, facilitated supplies of around 27 million doses to the COVAX facility. Uh, 20 million of those uh, being uh, a recent development in the last 15 days. Uh, we've also informed uh, the Gavi that uh, the 300 million doses commitment that is there from India, uh, we are now in a position to fulfill that commitment by the end of this month itself. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, these these uh, supplies are being facilitated on a priority for the Gavi COVAX uh, facility. So this m might be good news for some of the colleagues from uh, some of the countries which are, uh, uh, you know, are, are catered to by the COVAX facility in terms of COVID-19 uh, vaccination. Uh, just to uh, conclude uh, the priorities of the PMNCH results framework, call to action on COVID-19 and uh, uh, investment case are uh, fairly well aligned with our own national priorities under the national health mission for women, adults and children uh, welfare and uh, interventions in terms of uh, leading the country towards achievement of the sustainable development goals. Uh, I, I wish to thank uh, the, the PMNCH uh, board members for uh, bearing with me in terms of not being able to make it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you very much. And thank you for the continuing support of the uh, 
strong support of government of India. So as we come to the end, I think it's not uh, really possible to put up a, a finessed uh, slide uh, capturing all the points from the, the good discussion in the plenary that followed the presentations. So I've asked the Secretariat to include the reflections from the board members during the plenary uh, with each of the chairs and rapporteurs the reflections from each of these sessions and then to send them out. There's obviously you know, ongoing discussion on how we proceed on the items that we've gone into in depth on the on the how of, of our advocacy. So let's let's digest that uh, uh, in the fullness of time when we see the, the write up uh, for the record. And the aim is to show the formal net or share the formal note for the record with you as soon as possible. Uh, so everyone can review and reflect on, on that. Uh, as we come to the end of a very substantive uh, meeting, and thank you everyone for contributing and all who helped prepare uh, the content for it, we do have the board meeting evaluation form and the link I think is in the chat again for your convenience. Uh, the Secretariat needs to know how you think it went over the past two days and what we could do uh, better next time again. So uh, more or less on time, uh, we can say uh, thank you to everyone for, for putting aside uh, two and a half hours of your uh, busy schedules uh, for the PMCH uh, board member. We offer season's greetings for the new year and whichever other uh, festivals uh, people uh, celebrate at this time of, of year. Uh, thank my co-chairs for all their uh, efforts and look forward to seeing people at the next board meeting. But uh, as we've heard in the course of, of today, there are uh, a lot of meetings to progress the business and agenda of PMNCH uh, coming up uh, after the holiday season. And we really hope that leads again to feed into a very substantive uh, board meeting when we meet again. So let's say Abianto, uh, muchas gracias, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye, Thank everybody. you. Au revoir. Bye bye. Thanks.